This week's episode is sponsored by Geology. Click the link in the description box for 40% off on your 30-day trial. Meyer just did one of the boldest, riskiest, most dangerous things you can do in all of football. Become the face of arguably the NFL's most dysfunctional franchise. Meyer is one of the winningest coaches in college football history and is the only guy ever to have won a national championship with two teams, Florida and Ohio State, in two different conferences. He's coached some of the greatest college teams and players ever and his 187-32 and record more than speaks for itself. So what is he, somebody who's never coached in the NFL, doing taking the Jaguars job, a team who's only won more than six games once since 2011? Meyer obviously knows he's inheriting a bad roster, a bad culture, and a bad team that's coming off the worst season in the league. So there's only one reason why he'd stake his entire legendary reputation on this job, Trevor Lawrence. It's no secret that Lawrence has been the consensus number one overall pick for years, but at the next level, that doesn't really matter. What does Urban Meyer see in him that has him convinced the both of them will turn around a franchise that is down bad? Lawrence is really good, we know that, but is he good enough to completely turn around a Jags organization that's repeatedly struggled to develop successful players and build winning teams? It's a monumental task to ask of just one player, but if anybody in this draft can do it, Lawrence is certainly the guy. He led Clemson to the college playoffs in each of his three seasons, including crushing Alabama to win the national title, and possesses the prototypical 6'6", 220-pound size, while also displaying impressive elusivity both in and out of the pocket, and even factors into the run game. His completion percentage, yards per attempt, and QB rating climbed every year he played, and his physical attributes are quite honestly off the charts. His feet are calm and collected in the pocket, but he'll slip out of would-be sacks and make pinpoint throws on the run. His arm's strong enough to vertically or horizontally stretch the defense on any concept in the book, while maintaining good accuracy to create yards after the catch against man or zone. His eye discipline and ability to manipulate the pocket are what separates him from a really good prospect to a special prospect and elevate all of his aforementioned skills. Urban Meyer knows when taking over an organization mired in chaos, you have to be able to control, manage, and overcome that chaos, and that's where Lawrence excels. Here's a great example of everything going wrong, but sunshine from Remember the Titans making everything right. It's third and five early on against Ohio State in the playoffs, and the Buckeyes are showing man coverage with one deep safety and a six-man front. Even though Clemson has six blockers for six pass rushers, the Mug linebacker comes unblocked free up the middle, so Lawrence has to quickly expedite his drop and throw the fade to Cornell Powell. But despite the great catch, Powell makes this more difficult than it needs to be. When he gets even with the cornerback, he's coached to establish the red line, meaning push into the corner and work vertically up the field to maintain about five yards of space so the QB has more room to drop it in over his shoulder, giving him a larger margin of error. When Powell squeezes the red line, it gives Lawrence a much smaller area to work, forcing him to throw off his back foot to one really tiny spot 35 yards downfield. Even when he gets immediate pressure, he stays very calm and doesn't tend to panic with free runners flying towards him the way most other young QBs do. When he sees Pete Werner flying untouched from six yards away, he stays remarkably poised. Even though he knows Powell's one-on-one -on -one outside, he still understands the importance of using his eyes to create space and keeps looking down the middle of the field for a good half second to hold the safety. But while he's doing this, he knows he can't take his normal drop or set with a solid base, so he drifts off his back foot and demonstrates perfect ball placement even though Powell doesn't give him a lot of room to operate. When scouting QBs, you want to see how they react both in and out of structure, and Lawrence excels in a variety of ways in both of those areas. I did an episode last year analyzing his struggles with anticipation, which I'll link in the description box, and it's something he's gotten way better at. But before we dive into how and why he's gotten so much better, I want to give a huge thank you to this week's sponsor, Geology. This is one of those things you don't know how good it is until you start using it. Geology offers a simple skincare routine which fits perfectly into your daily routine. 
It's great for individuals new to skincare or the OG skincare experts. No matter who you are, Geology personalizes your routine for your skin and is designed to achieve the benefits you want to see. It's great for people with sensitive skin, acne, dark eye circles, oily skin, wrinkles. If there's something you want help with, that's what Geology is for. All you have to do is take a 30 second diagnostic quiz and then they instantly formulate a regimen that's completely customized to you and provides the benefits your skin needs the most. The 30 day trial set comes with everyday face wash, vital morning face cream, repairing night cream, and nourishing eye cream. And believe me, all of it feels great. You can easily continue with 90 day supplies of the products you love the most by either subscribing and saving or go a la carte, it's your call. Head to geology.com and to get my discount code, just scroll down and click the link in the description box below. Now, let's get back to it. Last year's episode analyzed Lauren's struggles anticipating receivers running into open space, which left plenty of yards on the table, especially in the national championship against LSU. It's something that's tough to improve on, since it doesn't just require throwing earlier, but processing coverages, understanding concepts, and predicting where defenders are going to be before they actually get there. Not only did he do a way better job of anticipating in 2020, but he occasionally made audibles at the line himself, where almost 99% of college offenses rely on the coach on the sidelines to change the play. When Clemson went to their three-receiver trip stuff with these three receivers, which in football are counted outside in, Notre Dame kept playing quarters and using their weak safety Kyle Hamilton to help on number three, so their linebacker didn't have to carry the tight end vertical. Well, Lawrence recognized that and flexed the tight end out like a receiver to stress Hamilton, then audible to a backside dig to attack the space that Hamilton would vacate. But since defensive coaches get paid too, Notre Dame made an audible of their own, checking to Tampa 2 zone, but with a couple of wrinkles. Usually the Mike linebacker is the deep middle read defender, but he's blitzing. And instead of the Will backer being the deep guy, Hamilton is playing the deep middle and the cornerbacks playing the deep half, making this an inverted Tampa 2. It's an exotic look for Lawrence to have to dissect post-snap since they're not really giving him a lot of info pre-snap. And his ability to anticipate this dig breaking inside is really impressive, and here's why. One of the weaknesses in Tampa 2 zone is the backside dig since one of these linebackers will turn his back to run to the deep middle, and the backside dig is exactly what Lawrence checked to. But since Hamilton's playing the deep middle, the Will linebacker is sitting right in the backside dig window, so Lawrence has to buy time, adjust, and find the frontside dig on the other side. None of this works if he isn't able to use post-snap eye manipulation and exceptional pocket movement. And he's not just good at those, he's really good. Right at the snap, he sees the Will backer sitting in the weak hook where he wants to throw the dig. So when he checks backside, he knows it's probably not going to work. Then when he sees Hamilton carrying the tight end deep, the alarm goes off the front side dig will come open, but he feels the blitzing linebacker. So he has to slide up, then rechecks the will to hold him in place, and on the run hits his receiver while getting smashed. There are several things about Clemson's offense that make evaluating Lawrence frustrating, even though none of them are particularly his fault. Over 27% of his passing yards came from either screens or RPOs, which are definitely areas Urban Meyer will heavily incorporate next year, but in terms of scouting, can muddy up the evaluation process since those kind of throws have a lower degree of difficulty. Plays that are designed to go to one specific player don't help us nearly as much in determining the caliber of talent, especially on plays where there aren't required reads. But Lawrence demonstrates he can execute those plays even when they don't go as planned. This concept is designed to look like a run, or even some of their RPO stuff, and is schemed to get the linebacker to jump up so Lawrence can throw the pop pass to the tight end, and they hit that tight end a lot. But even when the defense gives Lawrence a tricky look, he still reads it out to find the open receiver. Georgia Tech lines up kinda like their running quarters, but are actually shifting into cover three. Except it's not a typical cover three with two corners playing deep thirds, but cover three cloud, where this corner traps the flat and the safety takes his deep position. Lawrence does a great job feeling the backside linebacker being a little too close for comfort, so he progresses to his number two option who's being capped by the safety. Usually in cover three, this guy's running to the middle of the field or is coming down low. But since he's deep and is capping two, Lawrence moves to his third option who has to throttle down into space. 
Lawrence knows he has to layer the ball soft enough to get it over the cloud corner, but also hard enough to get it in front of the safety, while trusting his receiver to slow down and adjust to the back shoulder throw. Watch his eyes and footwork and how quickly he makes it through the progression without wasting a second or an extra step. Any wasted time or movement, and this is an incomplete pass or maybe even an interception. He has made a lot of improvement in terms of anticipation and mental processing, but there are definitely instances where he struggles with both. He solved a lot of those anticipation issues, but in 2020, he started showing occasional lapses in situational and on-field awareness. He'll sometimes lose track of linebackers or safeties, particularly in the middle of the field, and just flat out not see them, which can lead to turnovers. His eyes and ability to manipulate the defense are really good like we've seen today, but then on some plays, he lacks discipline and leads defenders straight to where he's going to throw. A few years back on Gruden's QB camp, Gruden told Brock Osweiler, the Brockweiler, why his 6'7 height is both a blessing and a curse. If you're in that 6'6", 6'7 range, defenders can see your eyes much better, so manipulating them will be easier, but if you're staring down receivers, that'll make your life much harder. For Lawrence, it's more of a discipline and consistency issue, since we've seen he can manipulate defenders at an extremely high level, but it's something we should keep a tab on. In terms of his situational awareness, he'll throw really short of the sticks on third downs a lot, and sometimes just makes puzzling decisions. But these are all things that Urban Meyer has seen and knows he can and will fix. In my opinion, these issues make Lawrence a little bit overhyped, but in no way knock him out of the QB1 conversation. Meyer point blank does not take this job if he doesn't have complete, 100% confidence in Lawrence fixing these issues, living up to the hype, and becoming the player that gives this franchise the identity they so sorely have been lacking. Great organizations are built around culture, and Meyer is one of the best culture builders in college football history. He believes that Lawrence will be the face of that culture, both on and off the field, and will help build the Jaguars into a winner, changing the direction of their struggling franchise and redirecting their course of history. Lawrence has shown he's improved year over year and has turned several of his weaknesses into strengths. If he continues to make strides, and the Jaguars can solidify him and Urban Meyer as their nucleus for years, even a decade or more into the future, Duvall will be back. Urban will still be a winner, and Trevor Lawrence will be legendary.